The Gofford Theater is silent, save for the occasional shifting of your fellow Foundation researcher. The two of you are alone, and you've been tasked with transcribing the performance of SCP-6373. You read the file, understood the briefing, and you even told yourself that you're prepared to witness whatever obscene show is about to commence. But you've never experienced SCP-6373 firsthand. This is your first time filling in for another researcher who got herself injured during one of the performances. You hope it wasn't anything serious. The lights flash, pointing to the main stage. The smell of rot is almost overwhelming now. You swear you see a family of rats scurry under your front row seats. The curtains fly open, revealing nothing. You expect someone to come out from behind the curtain, but the stage is barren. Suddenly a loud creaking noise is heard from above and four broken, poorly painted, and utterly deranged-looking puppets drop from the ceiling. Their strings are slightly visible, and their movements fluctuate between quick, jerky motions and slow, weighty ones. The one with the long nose starts talking in a high-pitched, lofty voice, asking the desolate audience if they're ready for the show. You start to wonder when things are going to kick in and really cement this anomaly's status as a terrifying SCP object. For the first five minutes, the show isn't too bad. The puppets sing and dance a bit creepy, but they're not doing anything wrong. At least, that's what you think. Until the long-nosed one brandishes a baseball bat and savagely smashes the smaller round one to a pulp, splattering guts and insides all over the theater. And it only gets worse from there. Welcome to the Gofford Theater, the home of SCP-6373. Codenamed by those researching it as Stage Blight, SCP-6373 refers to a collection of four papier-mâché puppets, each standing around one meter in height and complete with attached strings. These puppets constantly emit a rotting, disgusting stench, though the Foundation has come to the conclusion that this smell is entirely non-anomalous. SCP-6373 gained their anomalous properties at around 6 p.m. each day as long as they're positioned inside the Gofford Theater, a building located in the city of Reading, Pennsylvania, which is where the Foundation has chosen to contain the four objects. If SCP-6373 aren't inside the Gofford Theater, they instead start decomposing, rotting and breaking down into a stinky, smelly mess of puppet materials. So what happens when SCP-6373 takes on their anomalous properties? The puppets gain sentience, mobility, and limited intelligence, though attempts to communicate with SCP-6373 outside of their performances have failed. Sorry, no puppet interview logs for today. They then proceed to the main stage of the Gofford Theater and put on a puppet show. Wow, a whole performance. Isn't that sweet? Not really. SCP-6373's performances are notoriously brutal, unpredictable, and terrifying. So much so that the Foundation has offered counseling services to the poor personnel forced to watch them. That's right. There must be at least one observing personnel in the Gofford Theater to witness SCP-6373's performance, or else the puppets drop to the floor and start decomposing again. Following their performance, the puppets lose all sentience until 6 p.m. on the next day, where the process repeats. But let's talk about SCP-6373 themselves. These puppets have a lot of character. You have Pierre, SCP-6373-1, the main character of the performances, who just loves to verbally and physically abuse his fellow wooden companions. Gluton, SCP-6373-2, is a large disembodied head with a gaping mouth who speaks only in single word statements and deep guttural moans. SCP-6373-3 is a tiny gray round ball known as Emi, who remains entirely silent throughout the performances, despite being the puppet abused by the others the most frequently. The puppet SCP-6373-4 Jacques is a long-necked clown who serves as the group's comedic relief. But before we delve into the horrific performances put on by these entities, let's talk about the Gofford Theatre. The theatre was opened in 1860 by French immigrant Timothy Gofford for the purposes of putting on stage plays, musical performances, 
and in-house puppet shows that feature SCP-6373. The puppets were designed by Gofford himself and were massively profitable and popular with Reading's children. While it's not known if SCP-6373 possessed their anomalous properties during the original run of performances, the Foundation doesn't believe they did, and they were otherwise ordinary puppets controlled by puppeteers. Unfortunately, the Gofford Theater was not built to last. In 1884, it closed its doors after a legal battle between Gofford and his wife. Cynthia raged through the courts. Cynthia was accused of stealing money from the theater, to which she defended herself, saying that Timothy was not only unfaithful in their marriage, but also physically and verbally abusive to her. The lawsuit ended in a divorce, and an ominously worded letter written to Cynthia by Timothy. I write to you in poor health, and all joy sapped from my life. May misfortune follow you until the end of your days. I will not construct again that which I had spent two decades of my life working towards. I can only thank God's grace that the building has remained vacant, as I could not bear to see it owned by another man. I want to perform again and see the children smile. My happiness was so linked to theirs. A week later, Timothy Gofford disappeared entirely. Four months later, Cynthia Gofford supposedly died of natural causes. In 1887, Foundation Precursor Organization The American Secure Containment Initiative, or ASCI for short, discovered SCP-6373 inside the theater and documented its anomalous properties shortly after. SCP-6373 had a captive audience, and containment persisted long after the ASCI had assimilated into the SCP Foundation. And now we can get to the part you've all been waiting for, the performances themselves. The Foundation has kept a log of all of the SCP-6373's performances, but here are some of the most notable ones. SCP-6373's first performance in 1887 involved lighting fixtures around the theater collectively powering on several minutes before the show, as well as a slight piano accompaniment, originating from an unknown source. The contents of the show were simple. Pierre rescued a princess, a costume Jacques, from a dragon played by Gluten. Researchers noted several moments where one of the puppets had difficulty maintaining posture and moving, often taking multiple attempts to lift limbs. These moments increased in frequency over time. In 1895, the puppets performed a show about a bank robbery gone wrong. Pierre decided that Aimé was the one who alerted the police about their crime and spent the rest of the performance berating and abusing the small puppet, specifically for betraying its trust and breaking the bond they had shared after years of working together, as Pierre put it. The puppets use Aimé as a soccer ball, but their game quickly devolves into a contest of trying to see who can kick it the hardest. Emmy is noted to be silently crying throughout all of this. In 1916, the puppets put on a World War I period piece, taking place on a farm owned by husband Pierre and his wife Emmy. Pierre, upset that his crops were destroyed by the ongoing war, asks Emmy for support, but the puppet remains silent, even as Pierre's cries grow louder and more frantic. Pierre then shifts the blame of the crop's destruction from the war to Emmy itself. He states that Aimé will never be let out of the house again. Sounds of war and human suffering were heard throughout. In 1922, the puppets repeated their first performance about the princess and the castle. Except this time, the puppets sounded a lot angrier in their dialogue delivery, and their movements are described as frantic bursts in between moments where they do nothing but hang limp. Pierre yells at Gluten for an apparently poor performance as the princess, and when the puppet pretends to play dead, Pierre specifically states that that's not what being dead feels like. In 1938, the puppets attempted to perform a comedy routine, but quickly found out that their slow, unsynchronized movements were causing problems with the pacing and effectiveness of their act. Pierre became frustrated and brandished a prop fire hose, which he sprayed at the fellow puppets, causing them to scream as their paint ran off and chipped. Their screams heard throughout the theater were notably feminine. In 1952, Pierre performed a piano duet with Jacques, who was unable to sit still or keep quiet during the act. The annoyed Pierre proceeded to savagely slam Jacques' head into the piano until it was dented, and his jaw was detached completely. 
The Jacques puppet began leaking a disgusting yellow fluid from its mouth. Pierre fetched Emmy and forced the tiny puppet to sit in the fluid, all while Jacques writhed in pain. While the damage sustained by the puppets during each performance was healed and restored by the next day through anomalous means, Jacques' jaw was never fixed, and he continued to seep fluid for the duration of the anomaly's containment. 1958's performance was only two minutes in length, and featured Pierre attempting to teach an art class. Gluten's canvas displayed the words, Open Inside, which for some reason angered Pierre enough to end the performance entirely and lead the puppets off stage. For the next 24 hours, an unidentified male voice screamed and swore from behind the stage's curtain, throwing objects and punching walls. The source was not discerned, and no SCP-6373 instances could be found within the theater until the next day at 6 p.m when they re-emerged from the back and performed as usual. This 1963 performance was particularly bizarre. Pierre took the stage by himself and proceeded to deliver a eulogy for Timothy Gofford in the voice of an unidentified woman. Strangely, the Foundation discovered that a funeral service was not held for Gofford. In 1971, the puppets' performances became a lot more lifeless. Their voices became monotone and their movements were slower. Oftentimes, a puppet would have to hit itself in order to restore fluid motion to its limbs. This would continue in all future performances. In 1973, SCP-6373 performed a sitcom skit, in which Pierre and his two sons, played by Jacques and Gluten, took turns beating and breaking Aimé. This trend of physical abuse towards Aimé would increase in frequency as time went on like in this four-hour 1976 performance that consisted of the silhouette of the puppets from behind the stage, torturing the poor thing, all while Aimé silently took it. All the while, Pierre told Aimé that it was the sole reason the puppets were in their current situation, and why they were unable to move forward. In 1979, the Goffords Theatre's structural integrity was observed to be failing. Masses of rats, termites, and fungi were discovered throughout the building, Similarly, the performances themselves became even more disturbing. One involved the puppets reenacting the life story of Timothy Gofford, but refused to acknowledge or mention his wife, Cynthia. Instead, they claimed he died alone and miserable, without ever experiencing love. The performance ended with Pierre smashing its head against the floor and knocking it off, unleashing a swarm of blowfly larvae the Foundation was unable to remove from the theater. In 1983, the puppets performed a skit in which they held a funeral for M.A. After exploring a variety of possible afterlives from various religions, the puppets were understandably confused about which one was correct and how they could achieve salvation. Then Jacques has an epiphany, exclaiming, I know the answer! We're all dead! This is the only afterlife there is! The puppets then went limp and stayed there for a week. By 1984, the puppets put almost zero effort into their performances. One involved them openly fantasizing about injuring the audience members, and ended with the puppets picking a poor Foundation researcher from the audience as a volunteer and snapping her arm, all while laughing. Another had the puppets stating the full names, birthdays, and death dates of every patron of the Gofford Theater, from its opening to the present, and this included the Foundation researchers watching. SCP-6373's movements were awkward and slow, their speech slurred, it was clear that the puppets were on their last limb. In 1985, every performance had degenerated to a frenzy of self-harm carried out by the puppet, devoid of any stage lighting and accompanied by a noisy, barely harmonious musical accompaniment. Feminine screams and male laughter is heard throughout. But things got even worse throughout the year, as performances further degraded to periods of sitting or standing still and incoherent rambling while facing the audience. The performances were entirely indecipherable, and all dialogue consisted of grunting, moaning, screaming, and weeping. On June 6, 1985, SCP-6373 put on another performance. The puppets stood side by side for 18 minutes, before bowing and falling to the ground. No lights or music was heard. Following this performance, the puppets began to decay, shedding their papier-mâché exteriors. When this was complete, the insides of the puppets were revealed to be composed of human remains and organs. Pierre contained a brain, Jacques a heart, Gluton a massive skin and tissue, and Aimé was empty. 
All of this material had been cut cleanly and sourced from a single individual. When the Foundation unrolled the skin tissue contained inside the gluten puppet, there was no doubt about which individual it resembled. Cynthia Cordier, the wife of Timothy Gofford. The object was reclassified as neutralized, and no further performances or anomalous activity relating to SCP-6373 was ever observed. Now go check out SCP-701 The Hanged King's Tragedy and SCP-5049 Demon Dan's Discount Homunculus Depot for more SCPs that blur the line between entertainment and terror.